Many of you have uh, received an email from Leslie regarding uh, updating the firmware on the uh, TrueVision uh, IP cameras and uh, wanted to walk you through uh, processing the firmware update uh, using the browser. There's another video uh, that shows using uh, Device Manager and this will be using the uh, browser interface. Uh, first thing is to click on the link in the email that uh, gets you to the list of firmware. Um, this is a list from Interlogix uh, and it's based on which camera you have uh, versus which firmware is the latest. Uh, the camera that we're going to be working with today is a TVW3103. Uh, so as I scroll down here, there's 3102, keep going, and the TVW3103 is right here. So the firmware is a, is a version 5.2. Um, click the link here which takes you to Interlogix's site uh, and downloads a zip file. Uh, very small files so they don't take very long to download. Uh, once you get them downloaded uh, it is a zip folder uh, so you do want to extract it. Uh, you can see from my previous video we have uh, a different firmware for a different camera uh, that I worked with last time. Uh, so right click on that uh, zip file and just extract all. Uh, once you extract that file and it's uh, unzipped in the folder, uh, then we can just uh, get out of here and uh, we can work with that later. Uh, make sure if you do move it to a different folder other than your downloads folder that you know where to find it uh, because you will have to point to that file later. Um, so to get to the cameras on the uh, browser, uh, basically it's just going to the IP address of the um, uh, camera that you want to work with. In this case, um, what I want to show is uh, getting to a camera that's on the back side of a TVN10. Uh, the TVN10 recorders have uh, PoE ports on the back, and when you plug into those, those cameras uh, are now not visible from the regular network. So using Device Manager will not find them. Uh, in this case, I'm working with an in, uh, a um, uh, a uh, NVR that has a IP address of 192.168.2.82 um, Shrink that down here to get it in the window um, Now as most of you know that will take us to the NVR uh, IP address page uh, Unfortunately coming in on the NVR page we are not able to uh, see the cameras directly. So uh, as some of you know, and if you don't, this is a great tip, uh, to get to cameras, you can use ports 6500, 2, 3, 4, etc. to get directly to the camera. So going to the 192.168.2.82, which is our NVR IP address, uh, colon, 65001. Now this address will take me directly to um, the web page of the camera itself. Uh, let me shrink that down a little bit so we can see it in the window that's being recorded. Um, get this down a little bit smaller. Now at this point when we log in you can see uh, right here we are actually logging into a camera and not the recorder. Um, so as I log into this camera, uh, now this is a great one um, using the configuration page to do things like turn on wide dynamic range, uh, set up your IR capabilities, uh, and other things that you can only do at a camera level. Uh, first thing I'll show you is uh, under the system uh, menu item and device information, you can see here that we are at version 5.1. Uh, if you remember from the download, uh, the latest for this camera is 5.2, so it is due to be updated. Um, once you are logged into the camera, uh, then as far as updating the firmware, it's a, a simple matter of going to the maintenance section. Um, and if you scroll down a little bit, uh, here is our remote upgrade. So it's asking for the firmware directory. It's basically saying, where did you put that new firmware? Uh, and I will browse to that. Um, go to my uh, local disk. In this case, I'm going to need to go to my users folder. Uh, my user is group one. And open up the downloads folder. And if you remember, that was version 5.2 was the folder that we were looking for. Um, 
underneath a different folder. Once I say OK, um, that has taken me to uh, that folder location and it will pull the firmware, which is a .dav file, uh, out of that folder. Uh, once we have that selected, um, it's a simple matter of uh, clicking on upgrade. Um, it's telling us that the device will reboot once it uh, upgrades and we say, yep, that's exactly what we want. Uh, so we hit OK. And you'll notice this kind of gets a little bit gray because at that point you're now not making any more changes to the to the uh, camera. Uh, down here under your status page, it does show you that you're upgrading uh, and it shows your progress bar. Uh, this usually is a pretty quick process because you're not uh, doing multiple cameras; you're just doing one. Uh, so you'll see this uh, this percentage will uh, proceed fairly quickly. I'm going to pause the video until we get a little bit closer, and then I'll show you the end. And just like that, we're at 97%. I, I feel like we're on a cooking show here. I just put it in the oven and instantly it comes back out. Uh, as you see, this uh, now has come up with the upgrade has been successful uh, and it's asking to reboot the device. It will automatically start rebooting. You can see it's rebooting here and at this point um, I'm still grayed out with all my controls. Uh, I'm going to give this a little bit of time to reboot uh, and once it's rebooted I will uh, log back in and uh, show you uh, the end result. Okay, so uh, as you can see I actually didn't um, click any buttons here. It actually rebooted, reconnected to the camera um, and as part of the uh, new firmware it's now saying that there's a new version of the plugin um, to be able to view this camera. Uh, might as well update that now. Um, the one thing about uh, updating plugins is you do need your browser closed. So when I say um, OK, I want to um, run this file, it'll pop up a normal uh, um, uh, Windows install uh, section, uh, but it's noting that the uh, browser is running. So um, if I hit OK, I'm going to close out all these browser windows so that it can update the firmware. Um, that go ahead and happen. Um, click finish to exit and now uh, we are done with the uh, update. Opening up the browser, um, come back in and I'm going to actually go to the 192.168.2.82 and I'm going back to the 65001 because again I want to go to uh, just um, the camera that um, uh, we were working with. Uh, for some reason I need to resize this window again, uh, bring that in here. There we go. Uh, so log in here. I want to just show you the. Uh, um, so it's asking me to change the password. Um, that's a very important piece: is to always get uh, your cameras off of the default password to avoid them being uh, corrupted or uh, exploited from a security standpoint. Um, going back to our system, we now see our firmware version is version 5.2, uh, and that is the latest. Uh, as you noticed, it didn't ask me about the plugin again. If we go to the live view, we can see that it is uh, working and, and pulling everything up. At that point, your camera is uh, up to date and you can move on to the next camera. Uh, you can use the same uh, connection method uh, other than your IP address to update the firmware in your recorders. So if you have any questions, uh, give us a call at Group 1.